Welcome to a new session of Build Your Own Interactive DSL. Today we talk about uh, interpreters. So we've seen how we can implement a simple REPL and a parser with parser combinators in the two previous sessions. Today we look at, uh, we do a brief review of uh, our command data types to see what we have to interpret. We decide on how we're going to represent state in our game of life grid. And then we will implement an interpreter that understands some of the commands we, we defined. And finally, integrate parser and interpreter, which is one of the most powerful steps we'll, uh, we'll look uh, at in the, entire, in the entire course. So let's start by reviewing the set of commands uh, com and command types that, that we defined. We have one to display the grid, one to evolve the game of life system uh, a number of times. And then we have two commands that have to do with variables, one to set a, uh, assign a particular pattern to a variable and one to actually apply a pattern referenced by a variable uh, at a particular uh, coordinate. And finally, we can apply uh, straight uh, uh, the, the pattern straight away to, uh, to a particular uh, coordinate by, um, by just specifying the pattern itself rather than going through uh, a variable assignment. In this session, we will only focus on um, command that, commands that have to do with the state of the grid and the game of life system without uh, going uh, into um, implementing any command that have to do with variables. We'll leave that for a later, for a later session. I just wanted to give you a sense of uh, how to implement your interpreter so you can, so you can go and uh, have fun with that and then later on in the next session we'll we'll talk about runtimes and introduce variables. So in terms of representing state on our uh, game of life system, uh, you can think of the game of life system as a, as a grid with uh, x, y coordinates. If you look at the picture on the screen, you can see the bottom left uh, cell is uh, has coordinate 0, 0. And then there are a bunch of live cells or activated cells, we will call them later, in coordinate 2, 1, 2, 2, and 2, 3. And the way we can represent the state and the way we'll, we'll represent the state in our, um, in our application is by only, um, only uh, storing the cells that are live in a particular generation. So often you'll see implementations of game of, game of life where you represent the, the state of the entire grid. Uh, for our purposes, we only focus on the live cells. So we will store a set of coordinates represented, representing the active cells in the grid. And because we want to provide the user with some uh, useful APIs, we will wrap the set into a game of life object. So game of life new, and then a set will define a game of life uh, grid. We will want to be able to evolve the system a number of times, for example, calling evolve on the, on the state on a game of life object will evolve once and uh, you can imagine you can pass any number and that's in line with the command uh, with the evolve command that we have to be able to interpret and finally we will be able to uh, assign uh, pattern set patterns on the grid by adding and removing um, and removing uh, live cells from the from the grid and so the add remove api will allow us to do so on uh, uh, to, to apply a particular pattern at a particular set of coordinates. In terms of how we interpret commands, so we have this understanding that a show command will translate into a call to uh, draw API, the evolve command will turn into calling evolve a number of time on the, on, the, on, the, on the state, and finally applying a pattern will be transformed into a clever use of adding and removing uh, live cells uh, from and to the grid. Uh, and ideally, we will get to a point where we can show evolve and apply patterns on, on our REPL. And this we will leave for the very, uh, for the very last bit of our, of our session. So let's take this, uh, this slide as a reference in terms of um, what we need to implement. I will be adding a new file to our lib. I'll call it interpreter.cr. Uh, I'll put the interpreter inside the iGoal module. iGoal stands for Interactive Game of Life. Uh, that's been our practice so far. And our interpret method 
will take a couple of uh, uh, parameters. One is definitely going to be the, the command that we want to interpret. But then, because we've been talking about state so much, it's fundamental that we also pass the state to the interpreter because the command alone is not enough uh, to uh, let the interpreter know what to do with the command. So we will pass in a state and then a command. I took the liberty to, to provide a reference implementation for a game of life uh, offline because that's sort of beyond the scope of the of the of these sessions but feel free to check out the code and look at how I've implemented that uh, the only thing that is uh, relevant I think to this session is the idea that I define game of life as a class where we pass in a population which is just a set of uh, uh, life cells I've provided an alias for point uh, for for a a uh, tuple of uh, size two where you have two integers and I've called that point, could call that cell. And then um, I've defined an evolve method, a remove and an add method. Each one of these returns a new game of life object. So the API doesn't mutate the uh, game of life object itself, but creates a new one with a new population. And this is all we need to know about about the game of life and, and the state of the system. So state will be a game of life object, which also reminds us to require a game of life. And uh, the other thing we want is for a command to be a command uh, as defined in the commands file. So we'll remember to also require that dot commands and I can go back and show you what the commands look like in a second uh, and the idea is this so if I go to commands we have the evolve command and then the set var apply and and show command and if you remember from the previous session var name and pattern are just uh, wrapper classes for uh, variables name variable names and, and patterns what I've done again offline is I took the liberty to add a few utility methods on on pattern so that we can turn turn a string pattern into a set of live and uh, and dead cells in particular apply uh, is a method on pattern that takes a set of coordinates and return active and uh, passive cells or live and dead cells uh, as a um, as a return type and we'll we'll use that in in a, we'll see how to use that in a second in terms of how we interpret our command, you can we can rely on the on a case switch uh, statement. So we can say case command, and then when the command is a show command, then we will do something. When it is an evolve command, we'll do something else. When it is a an apply command, we'll do something else again. And finally, we said we're not going to. Uh, uh, take care of set var as a command, we'll just, we'll just list it here. So what do we want to happen when we, uh, when we interpret a show command? We, we simply want to draw the state. So something like uh, state.draw will, will do, we will return a string representation of the, of the state. And in terms of evolving the state, well, we want to evolve the state a number of time given that by command.n. I remind I can I can go back and uh, check that uh, the evolve uh, command has uh, one um, one field which is n so command dot n will return the number of times we want to evolve the system and remember that uh, state is uh, the, the state API is immutable so we want to uh, assign the newly um, the newly created game of life object to to a new state. And what do we do with apply? Well, apply is uh, a command that can uh, come in two, um, in two fashions. It can either have a pattern expressed as a variable name that refers to a pattern, or it can uh, provide, the, provide the pattern itself. And we know that uh, we're not going to be processing uh, variables in this, in this session, so we'll only focus on patterns passed uh, directly. So what we'll do is we'll extract the coordinate from the apply command. So it's going to be chord equals command.core, which is the first field in, in the apply uh, data type. And then what we'll do with 
uh, with the pattern is uh, the following we will case on command dot pattern assign the uh, field to the pattern to, to a pattern variable and then depending on the type if it is a pattern type then we will actually act upon uh, the um, the command otherwise if it is a uh, var name uh, type then we'll, we we won't do anything because we want to uh, we don't want to deal with with variables today and in the case where a pattern is provided we've said that pattern have exposes an apply uh, method where if we just give it the coordinate it will return the live cells and the dead cells like so and then it's easy to say new state equals state dot add the live cells and remove the dead cells and this is this is what the new state is going to look like okay so it looks like uh, we've actually um, took uh, we, we've actually taken care of all the all the commands we wanted to um, be able to interpret in this session uh, I wanted to notice one thing uh, it's it's not clear uh, at the moment with, with this implementation what the interpret method should return right in the sense that sometimes we are returning a string representation of the state sometimes we are evolving the state and returning the uh, the new state so to make this a bit more flexible and give us in fact all the flexibility we need we will return both the new state and a string representation uh, of um, either a string representation of the of the new state or some sort of message that can let the user know that the command they wanted to run uh, went through successfully or uh, if there was a failure so the idea here is to uh, let me expand on this for a second uh, for the interpret method to return a new state so a game of life object and a string which is what the REPL will give the user uh, when uh, when when they run a command on the uh, on the REPL so if I go back and uh, uh, show you the um, I have to call end here uh, so and if we go back and make sure that we comply to the to the signature the ev evolve uh, command will then return the new state and again we can return a string representation of the new state so that we can show that to the user and we can do the same when we add and remove cells and say new state comma uh, new state draw which will uh, display which will use in the uh, in the REPL to display the the new state if we try and, and compile these things will be all right but if we try to actually instantiate this so if I include I go here and then call uh, I go dot interpret a show command on the on the given state let's see if this and and we see we actually get a compilation error it says that the method um, that the interpret method should always return a tuple of game of life and string but actually it can sometimes return nil and I wanted to draw your attention to this um, to this issue here which is uh, due to the fact that the case statement at the moment doesn't understand whether or not the pattern matching is exhaustive or not meaning the compiler doesn't uh, is not able to infer the fact that we are uh, switching on each uh, each single uh, type that the command can ever um, uh, can ever uh, take uh, in in this particular case uh, the, the compiler is actually right anyway because set var uh, is is returning nil so what we want to do is we want to actually raise an exception where we say unsupported command and we know that the REPL as we defined it is actually able to support um, to, to handle exceptions gracefully so that that should not be a problem and we'll do the same for the case where the pattern is a variable name rather than a pattern uh, that rather than an inline pattern and again if I compile again we still have sorry I forgot to 
uh, dot new if I recompile again we get the same the same issue again because the compiler is not um, smart enough yet to know that there is no way uh, we can have other types here so we'll just add an else statement at the end uh, an else clause at the end of the uh, of the case and raise an exception another exception again we won't get there ever but I can say I'm right unknown command we can also do the same here if I compile now things should be okay and you can see uh, that uh, again we are returning the new state and an output this will come in handy in a few seconds when we go and integrate uh, interpreter and parser and if I put here uh, forgot equal so we are returning the new state and the output and now we can put the output right so this seems great let's now go forward and try to integrate this with our parser which is what will give us the ultimate power to build almost any any REPL really so let's go back to our build our own um, interactive DSL uh, REPL definition you remember we can run this and this gives us a console where we can uh, type in whatever we want we can say evolve one and that gets parsed into the evolve command uh, but in this session we're going to be able to bridge the gap between in parsing commands and actually interpreting them so the first thing we need to do is we need to require a couple of uh, files one to um, one to give us access to the interpreter and the other one to give us live uh, access to the game of life implementation and this is because of as we've seen it's uh, it's important that we define the state of the system uh, before we get into the REPL uh, and so this is going to be game of life dot new which in this case is an empty uh, is an empty grid and we can actually make our life a bit more exciting and say actually give me again a set uh, like the one we had before Let me... okay here we are and then uh, so what do we do with the state so what we want to do is we want to parse the command whenever we get an input so command equals this and then we know that there are two possibilities if you remember from the previous session when we parse a command we can e either get back a command object or if the parsing didn't go through then we're going to get a parse error so it's important that we run a case here and we say case command and say when it is an actual command then do something otherwise then it's going to be a, a parse error do something else uh, let's take care of the do something else first so if it is a parse uh, a parse error then we're just going to return we're just going to put um, syntax error and then hope that the parser combinator implementation we have gives a good enough representation of the of the error which is not necessarily the case because we didn't spend much time in making a reporting um, all right but for the time being uh, that will do so if we make a mistake in our in our syntax we're gonna get a syntax error and uh, print uh, print the command uh, print the parse error coming from the parser combinator implementation if the uh, command actually is parsed properly then we're going to get a an actual command and if we do get a command then we can call igol.interpret and pass in the state and the command and get back if you remember the new state and the output so some feedback coming from the interpreter that we can show on the on the REPL. So put output uh, will actually display something. Um, and let me also do this. Let me again to make our life slightly easier. Let me include iGoal so that we have access to the to the module all over the place. Okay, we're now again in our uh, in our REPL and this time around if I do show uh, then we get a, uh, a string representation of our uh, of our grid with the L-shaped um, configuration we, we expected and what I can do is I can call 
um, and apply on, uh, for example, uh, minus two, minus one. I'm, I'm looking at a comma a command we, we entered previously and apply a pattern. If I do, you can see that uh, that actually re results in uh, a new configuration on the grid. And then if I want, I can evolve once. Yeah, looks looks all right and evolve again. I can evolve three times and I get a new a new picture of the grid. I think if I evolve once more, then things are going to get quite quite grim on the on the board and things are going to be disappearing in a few seconds. I'll apply the pattern again or I can apply another one on minus uh, three, for example, and say star dot dot star and then we can evolve once again. And this is great. Um, so this is exactly what we wanted, right? So we've tried show, we've tried evolve, and we've tried, uh, and we've tried to apply a particular pattern. So all the commands we wanted to uh, try actually work. And um, this, is, this is really it for the session. So just to uh, recap one more time, what we changed here is we are now uh, storing the command we get out of the parser and then if the command was parsed uh, properly we interpret the command and alter the current state and uh, um, show the output to the user otherwise we print a syntax error which i can show you here if i say uh, ev rather than evolve then i get a syntax error where um, the, the, the parser combinator error will try to point me into the right direction so that's it uh, so you might have noticed that we haven't touched on variables in this session so the question is what where where are the variables well uh you might um considering we've touched on repls parser and interpreter and all we've got left to uh to talk about our runtime and command line interface you can probably guess that the runtime is what's going to make a difference and, and let us deal with variables as well so but but for now uh, just uh, have some fun with uh, playing with the your parser and interpreter implementation and if you have any comment just uh, leave them in the comment section below thanks for watching